This topic has been something, something been going on ever since the civil rights movement, something that you guys are all familiar with. Equality within the workplace and in several institutions has been a problem ever since over the course of the last couple of centuries and has certainly come a long way. Also known as positive discrimination in the United Kingdom, reservation in India, and employment equality in Australia, affirmative action is an originated phrase based in the United States. Once JFK signed Executive Order in 1961, change began to come about. Affirmative action pretty much has to do with the policies within factors such as gender, race, religion, and national origin to deal with some of the underrepresented groups and benefit those that may have not gotten the opportunity as some whites and Caucasians in the United States. One of the main key points for keeping affirmative action should be diver is that diversity is always desirable in an institution or workplace. For instance, as some of the Massachusetts natives will know, the METCO program has done just that. It is a program based out of Boston and Springfield, which gives families with minorities of minorities of children in those places to send their child to different suburban great white schools in order to reach their full potential and have a great education. This, for one, creates a cross-cultural racial racial barrier within those groups that are receiving these minorities from Boston and Springfield, and as well really helps the racial isolation from those receiving the groups as well. Mm -hmm. When talking about another another strong advantage is that people who start out with a disadvantage really deserve to reach their full potential. There is one person that comes to mind for me, Ronald Johnson, who is currently the financial aid director at UCLA. He started out as an African American family, very dirt poor in Brooklyn, New York, until his family in just one car. Not a, lot of, not a lot of luggage whatsoever, moved to Los Angeles. He, although he worked hard with integrity, intelligence, and determination to ultimately reach his, reach his goal, he worked at UC Davis for 15 years and then ultimately became the financial director at UCLA. But he, did, but he did state that although he worked hard, he knows that the doors of opportunity were open to him through affirmative action and he would have never been able to reach his full potential without programs implemented. Another reason that affirmative action should still keep going on is that stereotypes may never have been broken without them. It's been long spread for one of the different things that affirmative action still keep going is that it compensates minorities for the slavery and oppression and several other hardships that they have, they've had to deal with. However, these stereotypes have still gone on for a long time. Another man, Antonio Hernandez, he moved from La Cruces, New Mexico, his family was in a rural area, dirt poor as well, moved to East Los Angeles. There was a stereotype at the time in California that puppies, also known as upwardly mobile Hispanics, was a very negative tag, negative tag in California. And if you identify yourself as a Hispanic, that, go, that went with the territory, and it would be very hard to find a job or get enrolled into an institution. However, affirmative action did him up as well. He worked very hard. He's ultimately working as an executive at UCLA, and it is and he indeed as well thanks his thanks his development through affirmative action. Now, a rebuttal for affirmative action, some people will say, is condescending to minorities, and as well, it it really demeans true minorical achievement. This can be shown through Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas, I'm not sure if any of you know, he's a Supreme Court justice. He got elected in 1991 after the civil rights legend Thurgood Marshall announced his retirement from the Supreme Court and was elected as a chair. Some people would think, well, most people would think that he would be, since he is a beneficiary of affirmative action, he would be pro for keeping it. However, when there was a deadlock 4-4 in the Supreme Court, he was the final vote and he chose to lean towards eliminating affirmative action rather than keeping and helping governmentally fund developing programs for affirmative action. He believes that it truly stigmatizes the beneficiaries mm -hmm. that as far as minorical achievement, if, if you work hard, some people look down upon it saying, oh, you only got into this program instead of affirm for affirmative action. You only got into the school for affirmative action. However, with him comes hypocrisy. 
He came from a Georgia Royal home and then got into Yale Law with very, very little money from his family. And as well now, he is a Supreme Court Justice. He indeed worked very hard to get where he is today. It is very hard to very hard to believe that a individual that lacks a high degree of intelligence and determination would ultimately get to the get to the Supreme Court. However, he needed a boost. He even said a direct quote from him: "These laws and their proper application are all that all that stood between the first 17 years of my life and the second 17 years of my life." This goes to show that affirmative action certainly helped him and opened the many doors of opportunity that led him to great things. Affirmative action has been in the eye of the storm of racial controversy since it was first established in 1961 by President John F. Kennedy. This policy was established in a time of dire need and racial turmoil in a divided nation. Still in practice today, affirmative action is most commonly applied to an equal opportunity employment campaign that federal employers and contractors are legally, legally required to uphold. The purpose of affirmative action is to create diversity in the workplace the education systems, and contracting, while at the same time eliminating racial discrimination. Affirmative action exists in many different forms. This policy exists to create equal opportunities and to prevent discrimination against race, gender, class, or national origin. Throughout its existence, it has served as both a success and a failure, sparking an immense amount of controversy. The idea behind affirmative action is a noble one, and during its establishment, it was necessary. But as John Steinbeck once said, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. The controversy that stems from affirmative action is due to the fact that while certain groups of people are being benefited, some other, gr or other groups of people may feel that they are being uh, treated unfairly. While the aim of affirmative action is to thwart discrimination, it can often lead to what, be, to what can be called uh, reverse discrimination. This can lead to some employers and schools possibly passing over and turning down potentially highly qualified candidates simply because they do not meet the affirmative action quota. Some white candidates have spoken out that they are being, being treated unfairly due to this policy. In certain situations, a better fit may be turned down because they are white due to, a, due to the quota a contractor or subcontractor has to meet. At the University of Michigan, according to Pepperdine University economics professor, Stephen Yates, being black automatically counts 20 points toward admission, while a perfect SAT score only earns 12 points toward admission. In a social system in which candidates for positions are accepted or rejected on a complete merit-based evaluation, how is this fair in any way? People in the workplace and universities should be accepted and hired because they are the best possible candidate for the job, not because of the color of their skin. Perhaps the most blatantly obvious example of reverse discrimination from affirmative action is the Boston public school system busing in the 1970s. This was an attempt to promote diversity among the public schools and turned out to be a complete disaster. For those of you who are not familiar with the city of Boston, kids from certain neighborhoods would be bused to other areas of the city, often far away from their homes. The idea and motivation <coughs> behind this movement was a noble one, but proved not to be too practical. White kids being bused to largely, community, largely minority communities ended up facing hostility and violence, while minority students that were being bused to generally white neighborhoods faced the same welcoming from the white communities. Instead of embracing diversity, the Boston busing era just increased racial tension and hostility within the community. We must also consider, as long as affirmative action exists, what happens to certain candidates or employees' motivation and work ethic. Some could argue that this could lower the accountability for some people. If a student from a disadvantaged background or minority knew that they could get accepted into college with a 3.0 GPA, would there be enough motivation to strive for a 4.0? Aside from motivation, there is also the possibility of some students or employees being ill-equipped to handle demands of academic institutions or the workplace, if accepted based on affirmative action solely. There is a chance that if an underqualified candidate is offered a position simply because of affirmative action, that they may struggle or may not be able to handle the work. This is in no way saying that people who are hired because of affirmative action are incapable, but this, this may be the case in, some, in certain situations. 
The most effective way to, res to remove discrimination and racism from the American si society is to create a truly colorblind society. The fact that we have to note our race and gender when we are applying to colleges and jobs is simply only putting us a step backwards. It should not matter what color or sex a candidate is, and if these institutions insist that they hire and accept people purely based on their qualifications, then there is no need to specify. In fact, wouldn't this be condescending to some minorities to say that affirmative action is a potential necessary for success? It is understood that ins institutions are non-discriminatory and will hire the best possible, best possible candidates for jobs in schools. This is why affirmative action is an unnecessary policy and is only and is only further complicating the issue of discrimination in the American workforce and schooling system. Policy should not exist if while it is trying to benefit one group of people, it is treating another unfairly. This goes against the entire purpose of affirmative action. I want to touch on two of the points that he mentioned regarding the elimination of affirmative action. He did mention that it could be possibly condescending to minorities and also that um, it will it will possibly demean demean minority achievement and will and will let people know that they can just be accepted in the institutions from affirmative action rather than uh, reaching their true reaching their reaching their true potential. As far as 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 far as the second point, I think that it would be safe to say that people, for the most part, who are qualified to have to fall into an affirmative action plan are, are very proud to be part of that. They understand, and the rest of society understands, that they were put at a disadvantage. They need a boost. They will have the intelligence and integrity as well to achieve great things once they get implemented. However, some of them are dealt a raw hand. They're poor, <coughs> whatnot. This one lady, Ava Patterson, <coughs> in New Mexico as well, she stated flat out, I am proud to be a member of Affirmative Action because I am qualified. She achieved, she achieved great things through getting in from Affirmative Action, and that is one reason I believe that it should still be kept today. There are still many stereotypes out there that need to be dealt with, and potential, potential can only be reached by some of these minorities through Affirmative Action programs. Affirmative Action was established in a time of dire need, and there have been many positive outcomes. Children from less privileged homes have studied at some of the nation's top universities. Men and women of color have held prominent positions in our government and workforce. But the year is now 2011. We have evolved as a nation. Affirmative action has done its job, and it's no longer necessary. Look around at the UMass campus. There are students of color, professors of color, men, women, all studying at the same institution. The United States now has its first black president, and he was able to rise to office without the help of affirmative action. <coughs> like I said earlier, affirmative action is a noble cause and has done some great things. But we no longer need to take one's race into account when seeking seats at school or jobs. Asking for one's racial background is completely irrelevant to the positions applicants are applying. We should be working on a completely merit-based social system where no one will be disadvantaged. Let's create a truly colorblind society by eliminating a policy that has done its job and cannot be laid to rest. Thank you. As far, oh. <laughs> as far as reverse discrimination, think about when you're applying for a job or writing something on a standardized test. How many times will they ask you your hair color, eye color? There's always a question about your race. That's because the institution knows that there are still stereotypes based within those programs. You will get the advantage, and for that reason, I believe, Affirmative action is still need to be kept. It will certainly show that even people with disadvantages can still have the same potential and achieve great things. Thank you guys. <laughs> Any questions for our speakers? Thanks. Questions?